it is recognized that elephant is a long-ranging animal and uh, you need to be able to maintain a relatively large and viable population of elephants. But at the same time, the habitats also have to be viable to be able to support this population. Project Elephant uh, was launched in 1992 in order to address the conservation of uh, both wild elephants and captive elephants. We have three major objectives. Huh? First is the conservation of elephants and their habitat. Second is the captive elephant welfare. Yeah. And third is the human elephant conflict. 11 landscapes across the country were identified where it was felt that uh, we had sufficient geographical representation uh, in areas where elephants were found. And uh, this stretched across from, uh, the, uh, from the north, the states of uh, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand, to the northeast, uh, you know, especially um, Assam, Meghalaya, Harunachal Pradesh and some of the adjoining states. And then uh, in East Central India, especially Odisha and uh, the states of Bihar, and of course now Jharkhand. Um, and then in the south, uh, the states of uh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Kerala. You know, around 1992 or 93, um, soon after Project Elephant was launched, uh, we had um, an elephant census that was conducted, uh, you know, countrywide. And that came up with an estimate of about 25,000 elephants. But at that time, the method that was used was uh, uh, relatively crude. So teams of uh, forest staff would go out into the forest areas and um, they would count all the elephants that they would see. Um, they would of course do this reasonably systematically, but the idea was to try and count every single elephant that was there in the country in the wild. And this is virtually impossible. Also, such a method is not scientifically valid. Uh, because you have no estimate of the error of your estimate. Um, uh, therefore, you come up with a number and that number is taken as an, almost as an article of faith. So it was decided that we have to pay more attention, we have to go in for a, make it more scientific, more realistic. So then we decided to organize this, uh, synchronize, all India synchronize uh, elephant census. And therefore we came up with this common set of methods to be used across the country. Mapping elephant distribution, a direct count method in you know selected blocks of restricted area, the indirect count method, whereby dung, elephant dung densities are estimated and translated into elephant densities, and fourthly, trying to construct the population structure of elephants. And then uh, we had um, regional workshops. We had two sets of regional workshops in each of the four regions of the country. In the first regional workshop. We introduced the concept of uh, the dung count method. We also told them how to set up a dung decay rate experiment in, that, in their respective state. And uh, field demonstrations of this was, was given. And uh, so this was completed uh, during the months of October and November. So that soon after the first regional workshop, uh, the forest department actually started setting up these experiments about five or six months before the actual census. Then uh, we went through a second set of regional workshops in which uh, the uh, forest staff were exposed, especially the senior officials were exposed to all the four methods that are being used for the population monitoring. So in this we introduced them to how to map um, uh, elephant distribution, then uh, how do you really uh, design a, the direct count method by selection of blocks and then um, the how do you estimate elephant dung density through using the line transect method. And fourthly, you know, how do you age an elephant in the field? So field keys were provided to the senior officials to be able to train their staff. This was then followed in many cases by state level workshops because this information has to percolate from the senior officials down to the frontline staff. And therefore, we also conducted a series of um, workshops at the state level and some cases even at the division level. We are also trying to ensure that there is greater transparency in the manner in which these population exercises are carried out for species like tiger and elephant and so on. And therefore, they have encouraged states to take in volunteers uh, who will then contribute to this process and also generally be able to spread the message at large that uh, you know the whole process has had, you know, it's been fairly transparent.
The first was to prepare a map of elephant distribution in as much detail as possible and uh, produce data that could then be mapped on a geographical information system platform and then be subject to analysis you know, using computers and uh, GIS software. After that, we will take up the field level operations. It is supposed to be four days. One day we will keep extra for a spillover. If you have to make any um, inferences about trends in elephant population, you have to have some continuity with the previous estimates. We have therefore tried to persist with the direct count method. Randomly selected block sample count. Here, uh, that you, the division is divided into different block or uh, compartment. And we have the elephant presence and absence uh, details. And we take only those blocks or a compartment where the elephants are found. Here the idea is not to perambulate entire uh, unit of this 5 square kilometer what has been designed. For example, there are uh, 100 uh, beads or compartment within a division and we found 80 beads or compartment elephants are found. And this 80, we planning for a 50% sampling and we take 40 units randomly. Once this units are selected, then you have a three member party. They start uh, enumerating, looking for elephants. This particular individuals of team go to those locations where the elephants are found. They just look into the clues like calls and signs and the scratch marks of and fresh clues, they will really reach the point where the elephants are found. Third was this uh, indirect counting. So instead of counting the elephants, we will be counting the elephant dung. So we will having some four to six square kilometer of blocks. With that, we will uh, make a one uh, line transect and on the both sides of line transect we will take the operation this measurements of this elephant dung and try to come up with the dung density and finally to the elephant density. Use the rope as a straight line, you, you walking along the transect line and look for the dung piles. Once you identify see the lung, dung from the line, you just measure the distance from the line. In addition to it, every dung pile which is measured from the line also will have a GPS reading. Taking the distance, perpendicular distance from the line. So center it could yeah. no in the center, center. In the mundu. Mundu. The perpendicular distance is one meter fifty-three. First thing is uh, we took a perpendicular distance from the line to the center of the dung pile and then we take a GPS point of each dung pile. Do it up to one kilometer, then you have initial GPS reading taken, and the end of the transit also GPS reading is taken. Belege yoru vare start mare, atto varenge na wo end mare jis mare atto varenge. Ye vandu var kilometer distance aje vandu dina ro den prajiti kida re. The fourth method that's being adopted is the so-called water co water hole or a salt lake uh, or an open area count, where um, the staff go out. They are able to record the age and the sex of the animal. And uh, they are also being asked to take photographs so that we can come up with an accurate classification of each individual that they have seen. For example, anything about 8 feet is an adult, 6 feet to be uh, sub-adult, 4 feet to be juveniles, and anything within uh, uh, below his mother's belly will be calf. And therefore we are able to get a good idea of the population structure from which we can infer the demographic health of the population. Looking back, it is not easy. But at the time of execution, you are always on, the, on your nerves because it is not as simple as it looks. Lot of issues are there, lot of things have to be done. And every second you have to be alert till this census is over. In terms of trying to you know, get an estimate of the elephant population of the country. 
uh, what you can expect immediately is possibly uh, results from the direct count. You know, because it's a very simple method. You know what is the percentage of area that you're sampling. And you know how many elephants you're counted and you can make an estimate for that given division, for that given state and, and region and across the country. Actually, data field se gaya hai. Hum log ab, abhi data ko analyze karenge aur clean up karenge. Uske baad analysis karenge. Isme hai data hai block count ka data hai aur water hole elephant census ka data hai aur hai uh, dung count uh, ka data hai. The uh, indirect count method, on the other hand, uh, will require a lot of time because uh, a lot of data will be coming in. Uh, you have to estimate the dung decay rate specific for that given region. All the data has to be not just computerized, but run through more sophisticated statistical models. And those will take time. So it will probably take a few months. For indirect side method, three, three variables is needed. What is the decay rate of the dung? And the, what the density of the dung? And another thing that is defecation rate. Uh, Asian Nature Conservation Foundation is assisting the Project Elephant Directorate of Government of India in compiling you know, the results from all the states and, prepare, and preparing a national report. I don't think we have to be worried about elephant numbers. You know, we are confident that we have a very large elephant population in the country and therefore exact numbers are not very important for us. On the other hand, what's uh, important for us is to really understand the status of the habitat, you know, where elephants are found because conflicts are emerging in new areas and, and we should be able to be in a position to, be, uh, to mitigate these conflicts as uh, quickly and effectively as possible. So hopefully this exercise will provide a framework you know, that will um, assist uh, both the state governments and Government of India, the Project Elephant Directorate, in better planning for the management of elephants in the wild.